Para-SF is a group of special forces battalion of the parachute regiment in the Indian Army. These units specialize in various roles including counterterrorism, hostage rescue, unconventional warfare, special recce, counterinsurgency and direct action. The parachute units of the Indian Army are the amongst oldest airborne units in the world. The unit's heritage stems from World War II. I, Shorya, on behalf of The Ladder Podcast Channel, welcome you to this unique episode in series of interviews. Today on the panel, we have Major Sinam Poonachandra, retired, who is professionally competent and highly motivated Special Forces Officer of the Indian Army, with a decade's experience in planning, man management, security management, in an intense work environment. Sir, it's an honor to interview you uh, with a vast experience in the armed forces as well as you are currently established yourself in the corporate also, sir. To begin with the interview, sir, uh, being a special forces officer, uh, can you tell me when you decided that you will be leaving the armed forces? Uh, uh, as I say, I'm a special service officer, as we know, and in the nine year of service, there's a d- d- deciding factor comes whether you ch- choose to be a continue the service, either you want to extend or to release from service. And when I, I decided to opt for release after I had a discussion with my wife, then with my parents subsequently. Uh, it was a hard decision, but I took a leap of faith and, and it works out well for me right now. So, uh, I take it as a well-planned decision, sir. And uh, can you tell us what was the upskilling and uh, planning you had done for uh, switching from uh, government job to the corporate world, sir? Uh, uh, just uh, want, want to correct. Uh, I, ca- I will not say it was a well-planned which I did because uh, I didn't plan unless I felt uh, that we, we did fill a form, right? For the permanent... <laughs> And for the preparation part, as I say, my decision to get released was in the last moment. You know, being an SF, I was always in the field and not getting, you know, this kind of things were never in my mind. So it was in the last moment I took the decision and I didn't have much time for the preparation. But even the COVID started and the resettlement course which I wanted to pursue got cancelled. And as my that SB5 board result came out on June 21, I just had several months of my preparation time. So the following few steps I took, like firstly, I connected with various people who had already successfully working in private sector, including uh, civilians also. Uh, I used to call them up. I used to message them. And secondly, I activated all my social app, you know, the LinkedIn, the Facebook, Twitter, whatever app you can get. and. Through that, I connected people with various people. I have outreached them. Uh, we had a successful career in corporate sector. And thirdly, I can say like uh, my one of my course had recommended me to join this second inning WhatsApp group. Uh, it is a platform for all the source service officers to help each other in transition phase. And lastly, I had joined the Sambhav Kadam also. It is a platform for helping a military to corporate transition. And all this help actually helped me in my preparation and during my transition also. Thank you. So which was your first job, sir? And how was your first interview as well as the salary negotiation? Uh, for my first job, you can say... It was for an executive protection manager, which I was offered. Uh, Being in the special forces, uh, there's a high demand for special forces uh, and an ex-NSG, SPG for this uh, this kind of job, executive protection manager. Uh, It was for one of the top pharmaceutical company and they had approached me via LinkedIn. Uh, I went for a personal interview and face to face uh, with the head of security and finally with the head being my first interview and all, I did lack little confidence when I came for the salary negotiation part. But I did manage to get a uh, decent offer during that, I can say, year of that uh, when I was out. 
and uh, how was your experience with the other job interviews uh, which made you to decide that you will be selecting this particular company or the job profile sir yeah okay um i had applied uh, whatever as a you know social service officer we know everybody uh, who is in the trying to transit the second inning like we apply to all kind of application via linkedin via nokri.com whatever we can get but in total i have given five job interviews from which uh, three i was selected uh, as i already mentioned my first job interview my second job interview was a uh, you know a slp role in one of the leading e-commerce company you can say amazon it was uh, through a recommendation of my senior and from a second inning group uh, that my cv was selected and in that interview i total had eight interview in that company and uh, and after the final interview eight rounds of interview i got selected and but lastly i want to say is before i got my offer letter from them i already got selected and accepted an offer that is for my present company uh, being as the head of security for a corporate house in amdavad uh and with a good decent uh, package so i went for it and as you ask why i selected my present role i think it was a you know destiny whether i mean for the present company i had selected the role because of the position uh and the learning and the experience which i get which i will get actually i feel i felt that time is uh, immense uh, because being in a corporate of a such a big company and the experience you get is like learning also is ultimate uh, can you please uh, explain more about your current role in the adani group sir uh as a head of security in a corporate house is like of a g1 ops in an army of a you know g1 ops in a brigade of an army i can say like i am responsible firstly for the facility the employees the visitors and various categories of vips and government officials which visit and uh, even the contract workers also the movement and the material movement i am responsible for all the security by issuing pass check etc by giving them id cards uh, this all comes under my uh, job purview although i have a whole core team Which uh, you know, which I delegated the uh, job for it, and I also had to uh, keep an interdepartmental liaison, especially with the admin department, which is very important. I had to plan for the upgradation and the upkeep of the security equipments of all facilities to meet the threat scenario. I'm talking about the uh, you know uh, high-end CCTV cameras, high-end uh, facial recognition uh, devices, etc. all those kind of equipments and i had to update the sops standard operating procedure of security uh, i used to conduct audits uh, etc uh, all these thing to keep the documents and the procedure up to date uh, in nutshell my job is to keep the facility safe from internet as well as external threat so there will be no disturbance you know on the conduct of the you know smooth business in that facility and all this i have experienced in army uh, with a few changes here and there especially the leadership quality which we are groom in in army is very valuable in civil environment and i do think that's why they like to hire us the army officers oblique all those from the defense background because of our own uh, leadership quality yeah thank you uh, absolutely sir um with adani groups coming into the defense sector as well as the aviation industry uh, what do you foresee you, uh, there are other avenues or the opportunities available for uh, veterans sir uh, yes i feel there will be uh, better opportunities for all the veterans uh, specific from different arms uh, arms i'm talking about even the you know specific related to arms like and Uh, ordinance for the i think the ammunition industry then uh, all those aviation pilots oblique the from people who have 
you know coming from the ad background uh this all you know it is very much you know in the defense sector their job specific job i can say which we have done uh it is related and it is suitable with them and lots of opportunities will open great sir uh, for this uh, particular security role sir uh, did you pursue any certifications uh, in terms of cissp cism like that sir uh, uh as i told you i didn't had any time for the preparation when i went for a security role but i do recommend everyone like they should pursue because the competition is increasing day by day the number of people who are getting released has increased compared to during my time so i my recommendation is do it just for the you know backup no but it also will help you to understand the security in the civil environment also and uh, what are the opportunities available if someone is willing to join at the role of cyber security sir basically the internal security management uh see cyber security is totally a technical field and people with a technical background who is in the army i do recommend them to go for this kind of uh, uh you know cyber security kind of job profile because uh, at security in corporate is growing it is not the main guarding security anymore which we presume uh being here in the head uh, head office i have been uh, had opportunity to witness the vast innovation in security technologies we have a separate security technical team which deals with only with the technology part of the security so cyber security is another aspect of the security and people with a background of it uh, in a background the officers who have already qualified in those sector i think they should pursue the certification and all to upgrade them and subsequently i think they will fit for the job sir as uh, you were mentioning during your uh, transitioning preparation you were quite active finding out the jobs and uh, you were very helpful to your peers also sharing those jobs so as per you uh, what are the uh, right sources available to find out a job and how one should identify the right company with the right role and the salary package uh i will say first you decide what role you want to you cannot have a multi that thing uh, decision like i want to go for security i want to go for operation i want to go for hr i want to go for operations etc etc no i feel you have to have a specific once you have decided ki i want to go for security physical security which i am presently right now means you have to plan in that like example my field say physical security physical security if you want to go for it it does not require that you are from infantry or you are from uh, special forces or you are for anything it just require ki you are an uh, army officer with a uh, you know 10 years or whatever the years of service you have in the army secondly go for cpp this kind of uh, it is must i say if you want to go for the physical security and thirdly if you have a you know uh, mba background degree it do help in your qualification but not for the particular job as per se but as to for your qualification for the job perspective an army officer is good enough for a leadership role only requirement is the upgradation in certification that's all i think and uh, any uh, veteran hiring program is being planned at the adani group sir it's not about only adani or amazon or anything every company is compulsory to hire veterans you know as per the government rule uh, every company have a uh, some vacancy reserved for veteran hiring and uh, that's why you have to select your field first why only want to go for a specific one company you know you have to decide which field i want to go which state i want to go like say example i just give you a small example like uh, one of my friend is there who says ki he have a particular keen for only for bangalore so first what he should do is do his research 
his all industries are there in bangalore and what is the position that he want to join in that industry once he decide that position and the location and and the industry then subsequently he can start applying i can not say ki like you should have only one specific uh, company for application but you must have see multiple options who is fit for your role and at the end it is the you know the comfort and uh, you know settling down is very important once you have identified that thing indeed sir uh, i definitely agree that uh, considering it as a second innings a uh, better option one should definitely plan in detail as you have told now uh, about the uh, veteran hiring sir apart from this uh, like companies do post on the linkedin or other job portals and all so uh, there is one more segment of uh, known uh, networking where you will get to know people already working in the company so you were also mentioning earlier that the networking is important and you explore the job opportunities through that only so please tell us more about this networking uh, value in the job hunt sir uh, i will tell you more than this you know sending resume via linkedin or by job portal networking is the must for me if you want a 100% you know uh, say uh, networking with a person particular in the field then chances of you uh, getting uh, you know uh, to know the opportunity of the open is quite high job opportunity vacancies and all it is quite high because uh, when i was there like i used to get lots of insight like this is open this is open the vacancy is here vacancy is there and i i do used to share in my second inning group and uh, which had other people for them to apply at fast and i do you know help them uh, like a mediator i used to get the cv them i, I used to uh, forward the cv to the same particular field the hr department of because uh, one people uh, one thing that every veteran should know is there is not such like that ki only one hr is working for the whole entire company no every H, every department has an hr like say i am in security so security have a different hr department if you are in operation have a separate department if you are in uh, logistic you have a separate hr hr department is different for each uh, variance of the depart, uh, department of security of the operations or uh, uh, or you can say uh, the logistics anything so networking is quite very much important because uh, i tell you uh, just one uh, small personal example when before i said like uh, about to get released from army i just had 3 to 4 months so all all of what i did was i used to you know find a list of people who are there from one person to another one person to another i used to network i used to uh, send them a you know whatsapp message and ask them the time to call them up and i used to uh, call them up certainly we should talk then through him i used to contact another person through him then another person this is how the networking starts it is not that you are calling one person and you are stuck with it oh i have done my network no it has to be you know a uh, spread out like a you know spider web one person to another another to another another to another and this networking will help you actually you know to overcome your uh, this uh, feeling uh when you are about to get released now that uh, the feeling of you know um the insecurity of job hunting it reduces tremendously and uh, and lastly i can say is where i am here right now is all because of networking so everybody must try their best and network not only through uh, mobile when you don't have it that you can through linkedin also is a big good platform for the networking part all right sir uh sir as uh, you were already clear that you will be opting for a release and you already had a plan or let's say it was little late plan but there are certain officers who are uh, opting for extension so what do you suggest for them like they should uh, stay for uh, completing their extension period of 4 years or they should plan to move as early as possible what is your take on this uh, 
okay in this i will just uh, give a few points because i tell you uh, after i left army and when i joined my present role i used to get lots of calls especially during the time of release like say as a ss officer the release timing is either in september or in march right so during this time i used to get a lots of call like uh, if you you will not believe it, one day i said i used to get around 20 30 calls per day and they are so confused in life like uh, they really don't know like some say ki oh sir i have opted for uh, pc i and i was very confident that i will get a permanent commission and sir i didn't got pc and now i really don't know what to do so my advice is with the present trend of ss officers getting pc is hardly 23% and it is quite less and so it is a, always a good practice to keep options and start planning at the early stage my advice to them is first plan ahead least minimum a year okay to require plan and prepare for your second inning the person who had already planned years ahead has no worries in the end secondly if you are already planning for release and has time in your disposal then i will suggest you do an mba degree from a reputed institute along with certifications of your field of choosing thirdly remember security is not the only option for an army officer or any defense background you are qualified in many ways and you can go for operations hr logistic etc sky is the limit and similarly reach out to your friends or seniors who are already in that particular field and lastly for those people who are uh, about to get their board result out i will say don't panic if you don't get pc as expected think positive and move on for your second innings great sir i am sure you are all these advice will be very helpful for the officers under transition are there any op- offshore opportunities are available in adani group uh adani security is very big security every uh, adani industrial sector has security example i am in the corporate security looking after the corporate office uh, same way there is a security for the real estate Uh, there is a security uh, uh, for the all uh, that thing you know for adani person i just explained to you similarly in adani there is a head of security global head of security who is presently sits in the corporate office in amdabad below him there are the vertical security heads for each department and under the vertical security head vertical security like they are very senior okay they will be Uh, they are all officers who are seniors have more than 20 years of service either a colonel or a captain or a major but still they have an experience of more than 20 years they are in the vertical heads of security and they are next in line after the global head of security and below them are the head of security for like i am i am head of security for corporate office the same way there is a head of security for adani reality there is a head of security for adani uh, mines Uh, for each port they have a separate security there is a uh, security for this data center and all is recently coming up so the security field itself has a various classifications uh, into it and uh, and the, the department itself is quite a you know branched out very systematically and smooth so when you say to me like sir i want to apply for a security in adani i first ask you which department you want to go like are you planning to go for a physical security uh uh-huh. yeah one more thing is there's a technical security also separately people with a technical background they can go for technical security uh they are, they are called security automations actually and you know actually they they are paid much better than the physical security and you can go for it ha uh-huh. uh, apart from this there's another security also which earlier i have told you that is the executive protection manager the ep we call in short form Uh, same like a uh, you can say uh, a adc of a general maybe the pso uh, in a general they operate for the security of a particular 
VIP and uh, you are like an ADC coordinating all the movement of the security part. So executive protection manager is another field also. And and and, and if you want to leave security uh, this side and you want to go for like a technical role security, like IT security or cyber security security, uh, cyber security, then you can go for it. Uh, for that, of course, you require a technical background for it. So security is not limited to one field. It is like in different field variants. It is there. And uh, I'm sure uh, the all the avenues that you have covered in the security head will be uh, av available for the uh, veterans planning for their uh, second career. Now, uh, please tell us about the importance of salary negotiation, sir, and how one should plan about it. <laughs> okay, salary negotiation. Actually, I'll tell you, uh, being an army officer, we are very shy of salary negotiation. That is a very fact, I tell you. Not only with me, the people who have already been the, in the civil security, when I asked about the salary negotiation the first time, they are quite shy. I'm not talking for everyone per se, but normally all the army officers when talking about salary is very shy because we have been, what? We have never negotiated salary in our whole death and wall. In army, the pay comes, whatever they have to give, it comes directly credited to your account. You cannot either increase and either you can decrease. But I'll advise you, do your due diligence in salary negotiation. When I gave interview for different, uh, you know, companies, like I have uh, seen this uh, YouTube video, there's lots of YouTube videos that they, they how to negotiate your salary. So I have gone through lots of YouTube videos and uh, one trick I can just tell you just for uh, uh, among our colleagues is that key, when you, uh, when they ask about your salary to share your details, share it, okay, then they will give you a lump sum calculation and they'll give you a CTC, yes, uh, we are offering the CTC. So, don't immediately go for it. Consult uh, your fellow officers or colleagues who are already in that company. Consult with him, I, I, I'm applying for this role and they have offered me this CTC. Is it uh should i accept it is it coming under a bracket or no because see i am in here in adani uh and i know uh, i cannot say 100 uh, percent key whatever uh, i'm telling you you will get the study no it is not like that but i exact i know what are the bracket uh you are authorized so if it's too low at least i will say key, uh you your sudden your bracket is this and it's up to you yourself the final negotiation with the hr because uh, HR not only sees your uh, being, say, like you're from defense background, etc., they always see your qualification also. They do see that. And the importance of the job do matter in the salary uh, negotiation. Like, say, I was here for the corporate head of the security. So it was a very important job. So when I negotiated, uh, like when they offered me the first CTC, I asked for a first revision. And again, they offered me, then I asked for the second revision. And finally, I went with the second revision, which I feel satisfied that was good enough for me, you know, to settle down. But I was not, I'm not saying, or I recommend everyone to be picky because you cannot be, you know, uh, choosers at the first of your, uh, of your second inning. First job in second inning, that is a civil job, is all about learning and experience. So if, Company are offering a decent CTC, go for it. If you feel it is too low and it demeans the nature and it cannot, you know, you cannot cop up with that salary, uh, the lifestyle of yourself, then don't go, don't go for it. Okay. So this is my few advice now and then. I give to the people who calls me uh, regularly in mobile asking me, sir, uh, how to uh, negotiate salary. Uh, how to uh, know the word. So this is the few advice I give to them. Yeah, thank you. Great, sir. Uh, any last word of advice for the officers under transition, sir? I will just say ki, best of luck for those who are planning for the second inning. And I'll say, don't feel hesitant to reach out who has already successful transition in a civil environment. Uh, don't hesitate. But I will tell you, people don't have time. Okay, so 
don't be in that ki i have just messaged sir and he have not replied to me don't take that uh, egoistic feeling i do get a lots of messages and i little like tell you sometimes i don't really have a time you know to uh, respond to all the messages but when i'm free like say after my work has over uh, during my free time when i come home or during a uh, sunday break or something i do reply them back i do call them back and uh, and, I, and i do talk to them so uh, don't be such a hurry when people may be busy reach out to people and i will tell you nobody will say no to help each other we are from the same fraternity either army from air force or navy we are all from the defense fraternity and there is always a connection with us you know that because we are leaving the uh, the our first career behind and we are jumping for a second career that is the civil career so everybody knows the hardship they have faced so everybody wants to help everybody yeah time is a factor which i am totally agree but you can always reach out to anyone and they will never say no that i will tell you. even the head of a company like say if you if you reach out to the head of the you know uh, uh, adani head of security for the global uh, if you send a message to him or reach out i will definitely tell you he will respond to you because people do know the hardship which you, i or you are facing at the initial moment so just remember it is just a phase of life so take the leap of faith and go for it for the second inning thank you thank you so much for your valuable time sir i am sure all the insights that shared by you will be a learning lesson for the all veterans under transition sir thank you once again sir uh thank you thank you so uh, team soria uh, for this uh, i think you guys are doing a good job you know trying to uh, get the experience out of us uh, who are already settled in the corporate sector in the second inning they have established uh, because otherwise i have to attend in a day around 30 20 to 30 call i used to get and lots of messages so unlimited and this kind of you know the broadcast which you guys are doing is a very good and you know instead of reaching out people really can uh, whatever questions they have doubt they can see your podcast and you know they will get the first answer but still i will say if anybody want to reach out to me i am there in the second inning group and you can reach out anytime i am always ready to help thank you